We are joined by James Morgan, RN, who is in the process of getting his doctorate, a doctorate as a nursing practitioner. Correct. And James, mm -hmm. you are interested in not only my heart health, but the heart health of people that I know and that I'm around as well. A kind of that ripple effect. I think that's kind of fascinating. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how you got to be focused on heart health. Well, I started as an EMT and I worked my way up to a registered nurse and like you said, I'm working on my doctorate degree. And throughout the process, uh, I've really developed this, this liking to a heart. Can you believe that? You know, love, love for a heart. What an odd concept. <laughs> no kidding, huh? But uh, a big part of that is uh, my family. I've had a lot of family history of, of cardiac disease, uh, including um, uh, heart attacks and uh, other heart issues. And I figured, why be, the, be a part of the problem when I can be part of the solution? And that's where I really decided that I'm going to be, become part of the, the solution to heart health, hopefully around the world. Well, and, and, and I love that. I've been real involved for years with the American Heart Association for, for similar reasons. And there are so many simple things that we can do to change our lives that can help prevent heart attack and stroke and other heart-related problems. Uh, but equally important, and I know we'll be talking about this in a little bit, is learning life-saving techniques that may not only save the life of a loved one, but a stranger as well. So give us a little background in this. And, and I know, you know there's some incredible statistics out there that are kind of scary. Uh, and the difference between a cardiac event and a heart attack. Well, a heart attack for one is, if you think of your heart as a pump, it's a muscle, so mm -hmm. it's a pump, and it needs two things. It needs blood and it needs electricity. So with a heart attack, there's a blood, uh, blood flow stops in a certain portion of that heart or the pump. It kind of uh, clogs up. Exactly, and a lot of times that has to do um, with some sort of a blood clot somewhere. A lot of risk factors included with that, smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, the list kind of goes on. Um, so that there's a portion of the pump that's not working, and that's usually why it causes some certain uh, sort of a pain, for example. A lot mm -hmm. of people think chest pain, heart attack, and that's generally how, how it's associated, along with uh, some other symptoms. Right. But then you go into a cardiac arrest, and if you think of just the, the plain, simple aspect of cardiac arrest, your heart stops. Uh, and there's, a lot of mul there's a multitude of, of reasons as to why, potentially, but that's, that's where it comes from, is um, what the difference between a heart attack and cardiac arrest. And where cardiac arrest comes in, into play, that's where the life-saving bystander CPR is, is very important. It's vital to the success and to the, the safety of, of other pe people. And I understand mm -hmm. that CPR is even changing. You know, from the classes I took maybe 20 years ago um, to today, it, it's hands-only, is that what it's called? Correct, hands-only CPR, compressions-only CPR. It's developed by the American Heart Association. There's a, a lot of science behind it. That, that's a whole different episode, but basically, in a nutshell, what it's doing is it's getting people to do something rather than nothing. 88% of all cardiac arrests happen outside of a hospital setting. It's pretty staggering. A little over 8% of success rate. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, is that because no one does anything or because people do things wrong? Majority of it is people don't do anything for a couple things, for fear, because uh, if you think if you think traditional CPR, what do you think of? Yeah, with the mouth compressions to mouth. and the mouth, right? right? No one wants to do mouth to mouth on a stranger. Some people don't want to do mouth to mouth on someone they know, mm -hmm. right? Um, so there's the fear. There's also lack of training. Uh, they, they've uh, found that because of the 88 percent, that's at four out of every five cardiac arrests happening outside of the hospital. Only 32 percent of those are actually, someone's actually doing something. Mm -hmm. So the idea, the campaign behind it is, is we want to, want to make it easy, hands-only CPR. If you think of, of your hands as the patient's heart and the compressions as the patient's heartbeat, time is heart, and you're able to really potentially save someone. And what about, I know there's also those that are afraid, especially with a stranger, of doing something, because if they do something wrong, you know, they end up in court, they end up in jail you know, whatever. Right. That's a, that's a, the legal aspect is, is definitely uh, of, of concern. But the great thing about the Good Samaritan Act is if you're doing your due diligence to try to save someone's life, you're covered. You're covered. Mm -hmm. And outside of a stranger, certainly for our own family members, 
you know, knowing the basic CPR. Where can someone go to learn this, this hands-free CPR? Well, hand, the, the hands-only CPR. I mean, not hand. <laughs> hand I'm thinking my hands-free <laughs> cell phone. <laughs> hands-free CPR might be a little... Mm. Mm. That's probably, we're on, CPR. We're, we're on our way to that. We're on our way to that. We probably are on our way to that. Well, you can go to my website, it's AmericanMedicalEducationCenter.com. But also, the, the main reason why I'm here is to be able to promote heart health. So if you go to the American Heart Association website, you can find a, a, a certified trainer anywhere in your area. Um, so the idea is to go out, you can, again, check my website, AmericanMedicalEducationCenter.com or go to the American Heart Association website. Uh, both great websites. What are some of the things we'd find at your website? Well, you can find uh, uh, other classes, not only based with, on my background, I, I teach healthcare providers, that's RNs, doctors, um, EMTs, uh, from basic CPR to advanced cardiac um, uh, classes for both adults and for pediatrics. But also uh, a big thing that I want people to understand is that it's not just for healthcare providers. It's for friends and family. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, you want to be able to protect not only yourself and, and strangers, but at the same time maybe your, your loved ones at home. Okay, so the CPR has changed. The one that comes to my mind, and, and I once when one of my children were very young, I had to do this, but if someone's choking, is the Heimlich still the thing to do, or is, well, is there funny. a hands-free way to help someone <laughs> who's choking? Not, not yet, anyway. <laughs> there, American Heart Association's calling it the abdominal thrust. We're, not, we're getting away from calling it the Heimlich maneuver. However, everyone, everyone knows what the Heimlich maneuver is. So it's and still the same thing, the same, just with a new, new label. New label, same thing. Um, however, there's a different technique as to say, what if, what if for some reason that object doesn't come out, what do you do next? And that's mm -hmm. where the training needs to come into play. Okay, and we can get more information on that at your website as, as well. All right, we're almost out of time. A couple tips to lead, to lead a heart healthier life. Well, think about everything in moderation. It's okay to eat those cupcakes and those cookies, but just in moderation. Try to get some exercise, even if it's a brisk walk, 30 minutes a day. Uh, looking at your diet, looking at your exercise, but also looking at your overall health. Stress has, has a big impact on your heart. Um, so if you can eliminate some stressors in your life, that'll also be a big, big help. And I've heard things from, from other places and other sites, you know, obviously watching your diet. And the truth is, you know, we all know. I mean, really, <laughs> you can claim you don't, but at some level, you know what's better for you to eat than, than isn't. Um, and exercise alone, can help not only physically with the heart, but mentally and emotionally uh, as, a, as a stress uh, releaser. Um, you know, meditation or quiet contemplation or just shutting your eyes for 10 or 15 minutes in the day and just getting clear and focused are all things that can really be helpful. So one more time, if someone wants more information on you or anything we've talked about, how can they get it? On my website, it's www.americanmedicaleducationcenter.com. You can follow me on Twitter at AMMED, M-E-D, Center. That's at, that's the, the Twitter. Or on Facebook, facebook.com backslash American Medical Education Center. Well, James, thank you for joining us, and thank you for all you're doing to help keep us all heart healthy. Thanks thank for having you. me. Don't go away. We will be right back really focusing on putting more emphasis on vegetables and having maybe two or three vegetables on your plate and a smaller, much smaller portion of meat for those you know, of us who enjoy that still, sort of thing. That are still carnivorous. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's funny, my daughter's a vegetarian, so we go back and forth, but uh, yeah, just really adding more of the vegetables in and adding more And creative in. ways of making the vegetables. Definitely. I was sharing with you earlier, I just learned how to rice cauliflower. So putting it in a food processor and pulsing it for just a little bit and then roasting it. It's oh, amazing. Wonderful. Such great flavors. I've when never you... had it rice, but I have had it roasted. And it's one of my favorite dishes. Yeah, with it a totally little Parmesan changes, on yeah. it.